Today we're going to have an in-depth look at my GT Sanction team, a bike that was developed with help from Dan Atherton and ridden with great success by Martin Mays at the Enduro World Series. This is a 27.5 wheel bike with 160mm rear travel, 170mm up front, designed for the most aggressive enduro trails. This bike is designed around that progressive geometry of quite a long front centre and therefore the cockpit actually features a really short stem. It's a race face atlas bar and stem, it's a 35mm long stem, it's also 35mm oversized handlebar. These race face atlas bars come standard as 800mm wide which for me personally is a bit too wide. I tend to run 750mm on all my bikes, but because this is quite an aggressive bike and actually use it for a lot of downhill, I've chopped them down to slightly wider than normal and they're 760. The suspension comes courtesy of Fox. Up front we've got the 36 float with the Fit RC2 cartridge. I find that with this progressive geometry, like I say, the fairly long front centre, the fork setup is really important and I run them at about 80 psi. In fact, I think I might go down slightly and rely on putting an extra volume spacer in there just to make them ramp up slightly more. On the back, you've got this Float X2 shock. It's got high and low speed compression as well as high and low speed rebound, which is great. There's loads of adjustability in there. It feels almost like a mini downhill bike where I can really tune in my suspension for the conditions. I ride the medium size frame and I'm about 5 foot 10. It feels nice and roomy to me, just enough space without it being too long. The wheelbase is 1186 millimetres and the head angle is 66 degrees, so it's pretty slack for a trail bike. So the Sanction is an alloy frame front and rear and it uses this independent drivetrain suspension system with a forged linkage, a lot like the GT Fury, the World Cup downhill bike. Well, this is more designed obviously for the enduro racing, so it's nice and active and it still pedals really well. Talking about pedals, the drivetrain is all supplied by Shimano, XT cranks with a 32 tooth chainring. I think I'd probably move up to a 34 actually. It's got the full chain device on here, it's designed for really aggressive riding. It's the E13 LG1 with top and lower guides. I've got the Crank Brothers 5050 flat pedals on at the moment, so I've been doing some downhill runs on it. I spend a bit of time on both three, probably a bit more time on clips where I use the Crank Brothers Mallet E pedals. I've got the Shimano XT 11 speed 1142 cassette on the rear, and the Shimano XTR Shadow Plus rear mech with the clutch. So the wheels, I've got some DT Swiss 350 hubs. On them, I've got some Stans Flow EX rims, 27.5 obviously. I've got the Maxxis High Roller 2 in 3C tyres. Um, I would normally run tubeless on all my bikes, so I've actually had to put tubes in both front and rear at the moment because I've been thrashing this bike very hard for a video where we tested how aerodynamics affect how fast the bike is. And unfortunately, I ripped both the tyres. So, I'll have to fix that at some point and go back to tubeless. The bike's finished off with a Shimano XT shifter and XT brakes. It's got a 180mm disc on the rear and a downhill size 203 rotor up front. I've got the KS Lev Integra post with internal routing. That actually just pops out the bottom of the seat tube there. I think it's routed up to the southpaw lever up on the bar. WTB Silverado saddle. Really like this saddle actually. Cool thing about it is this logo. The colours match the frame and also the fork decals, which I'm sure you'll agree, looks pretty damn cool. I'm really fussy about my handlebar controls. I really like my brake levers to be quite far in, the reach close to the bar so I can reach them really easily. And also my dropper post, I hate having to move my hand to reach it. So the great thing about this KS Southpaw, it's got loads of adjustability. Obviously I've got no front mech on this bike, so I can really get that lever in the right position. To check out some more videos featuring a GT Sanction like this one here, you can click up there for Dan Atherton's GT Sanction Pro Bike and click just down there where Martin Mays shows us really how to ride one of these things and tells us his top enduro tips. Click in the middle to subscribe to GMBN if you haven't done already. Leave us comments. What do you think about my GT Sanction?